When looking at geologic time, definitely the concept that people struggle with the most is going to be understanding isotopic age dating and how half-lives worked. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. Um, so we know the concept of half-life, the gen generic definition is the time it takes for half of the parent to turn into a daughter product. So what does that mean? So let's give an example. So carbon-14 is an isotope um, that is unstable that converts to nitrogen, and it has a half-life of 6,000 years. So what that means is that every 6,000 years, half of the carbon-14 is going to convert to nitrogen. So let's take M&Ms, for example. So these are my favorite little mint M&Ms, and we're going to pretend like um, I'm going to say that every 20 minutes, I'm going to eat half of what I have. Okay, so right now at time zero, um, there all the M&Ms are sitting there. And after 20 minutes, half-ish are going to be in my belly. I'm going to stick in my pocket, but let's pretend like I ate them. Okay, so now I have a 50-50 split. I have about eight in my pocket and eight or so in my, my little tub here. Okay, so that's after 20 minutes. Now after another half-life, so another 20 minutes, 40 minutes total, I'm going to half this again. I don't eat the other half, I half it again. So I'm gonna take half, which is about four, and put them in my pocket. Okay, so now I have four left here, and I have about 12 in my pocket or in my belly if I'd eaten them. So after 40 minutes, two half-lives total, I have 25% left here and 75% in my belly. After another 20 minutes, so another half-life, an hour total, I'm going to half it again, and I'm gonna take two, I'm gonna eat those. And so um, now you can see that I've got about 14 in my pocket or in my belly, and I have uh, two left here. And you would keep doing that over and over. But the concept is to really think about halving what you have. You don't eat one half and then eat the other half. You're constantly just um, eating down into half. So now let's look and see, um, what that looks like here. Okay, so if I've got my um, carbon going to nitrogen and I know my half-life is every 6,000 years, what I can say is let's say that I start with um, 800 atoms of carbon-14 and I would start with zero nitrogens. Okay, so after um, zero half-lives, which would be zero years, I would have this 800-0 split, just like at the very start, I had you know, 16 M&Ms in my little tray there and none in my belly. After one half-life, so in this case, I've, I've um, estimated this to 6,000 years. It's actually in the high 5,000s, but for our math here, it's gonna be easier. So after 6,000 years, we would have halved this. So it's going to be a 50-50 split. I'm going to have 400 carbons and 400 nitrogens. Okay, so 50-50 split. So we could even put that like 100% and then 0% and now we're at a 50% and 50%. Okay, so now let's keep going. After two half-lives, so a total of 12,000 years, I'm going to have half of this is 200 and then I would add the 200 from here got converted over and got added to this pile here just like with M&Ms that got added to my belly. So I have 600 over here. So this is a 25% and then I'm 75% split. So we'll do it one more time. So after three half-lives, a total of 18,000 years. And um, we're gonna split again. So I have 200 left, so I'm gonna split that. So 100 will remain, and then 100 is gonna convert and get added to this pile. So added to my belly, and that's gonna be 700. So I have a 100-700 split, which is a 12.5%, 87.5% split. So you can see you can continue to do that and keep going down as time increases, number of half-lives increase, our parent um, isotope, which was carbon, converts to daughter products. 
Um, another thing I like to think about is like, how do we get an age off of this? Okay, so we have the idea of the decay. So for this, I like to think about a tapered candle. So picture, let's say this is my tapered candle, right? One of those candles that are like nice and thin. And let's say that we know that this candle burns one inch every hour. Okay, so we light our candle, we leave the room, we come back later and four inches is burned down. We would conclude that, oh, we've been gone for four hours. So it's a constant, we know the candle always burns at that. Now, of course, this is a linear burn and this is a little bit different, but you get the idea of um, where we're going with that. So when we come back over here, we can say, we've started our decay process, we leave the room, right? Time starts to pass. And we come back and we say, oh, we have a 12.5, 87.5% split. So that's how much of this has burned down, like in our candle example. So we know that three half-lives have passed. In this case with carbon, the half-life is 6,000 years. So we've been gone for, or that rock has been there for 18,000 years. Now, um, in our candle example, let's say that you come back into the room and the candle's completely burned out, okay? So there's nothing left. You would, all you would know, let's say if it was like a 10 inch tapered candle, you would know you were gone for 10 hours. If it was a 12 inch candle, you were gone for 12 hours or more. You could be gone for a million years, right? You have no idea how much past that time um, you've gone. So these kind of work the same way. Eventually, I mean, you never really get to zero with this because you're always halving, but you get to a point where you can no longer measure that amount. It's so, so small. So it's essentially gone. And so you get to like the end here where um, because you can't measure it any longer, you no longer know how long you were out of the room or how long this rock has been forming. So your lab manual will talk about how um, carbon dating has limits to it. And that's because the half-life is every 6,000 years. So just eventually you get to a point where um, you can no longer measure that small, tiny amount that's left.